Constitution. All right, it's a thing in the world. It's all over the world, too. Yeah, it? it's true. It's everywhere. Tons of stuff. Just you know where chairs are normally distributed? Chairs are? Yeah. The heights of chairs. They take the average person, and that's uh, within the standard deviations, and then that's huh. how high they are. So that's why the third grade chairs are so much shorter. They mm. can just random. It's not random height. It's the average third grader. Is that why... In countries where people are much taller, there are taller chairs. Yeah, like uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about babies and the ability to walk. So those would also be normal. If you took every baby and how long it took him to walk, you would get some babies that walked quite early and some babies that walked quite late. We know that Mr. Curves is very interested in these this sort of baby data. And that's right. Yeah. And my baby worked at just after nine months, so she's somewhere oh, down there. That's somewhere. a good question. We'll throw that one in at yeah. the end. Where Where does, where does Emma fall in the distribution? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So we know that 5% of babies learn how to walk by the age of 10 months. Okay. All right. And 25% need more than 13 months. So 25%. Need more than 13 months, so more than 13, that's somewhere over there. Huh? So that's 25%, 0.25. I usually, you know, the, the, the area inside is the percentage, and then down here we'll get the, the 13. Okay, so. and then how do I do it down here? And at the other end, then you've got 10. So 10, 5%, so 10 down here. Yeah, and then shaded area is 5%, 0.05. Good, okay. So there was a, an interesting question that we explored earlier where both sides of the curve were the same and then you could just take the midpoint because the mean was right in between them. But in this case, we have 5% on one end and 25% on the other. So that we can't just use that symmetry. We need to use the formula Z equals... Z, Z equals... Yeah. Z equals... Yeah, okay. X... Minus the mean. So your uh, your value minus the mean. Good point. Okay. Over the standard deviation. Okay. Okay, and another symbol for the mean, there's x bar, and then your formula book, you'll see it with that funny u, like a mu. See, so x minus this over this, something like that. Okay. So we need to apply this twice. The problem is now we have one equation with three things that we don't know. Mm -hmm. So we need to go back to the standard normal use our inverse norm to find the z values on the standard normal. Okay. So, uh, first thing we need to do is bare bones, what sort of z-score should I be expecting out of 10, Mr. Curvis? Positive or negative? Out of 10? A z-score out of 10? Not out of 10, but uh, oh, a value of that. 10. Yeah. Sure, sure. Then, we're going to be looking at something in the negative for sure, maybe somewhere negative 2 point something? Yeah, negative 2 something, but we definitely know that it's going to be negative. And the 13 will definitely, because it's above the mean, will definitely be a positive z-score. Keep in mind, a z-score just means how many standard deviations the value is away from the mean. Okay, so we can just go inverse normal. Inverse, so distribution, inverse normal, and I can just put in 0 0.05. And that'll give me a z-score of negative 1.64. So this one is negative 1.64. Then I can do it again and I can put in 25. 25, 25, 25, and I get this. Is that correct? No, we need the positive value there. So 0 0.674. Because of the symmetry, we could take that value and simply make it positive. The other alternative that we could do is we could set up inverse norm for 0 0.25. Or sorry, for 0 0.75. Yeah. Keep in mind that the calculator always reads from negative infinity to your value. So from the lower, the lower part of the distribution to the value. It doesn't read these upper portions. You've got to, you know, do your own little mental math to get that. So 0 0.75, we should expect the same value but positive. Oh, whoops. Deleted the 5 there. Sorry. I almost quit my job. <laughs> right then, I didn't know. So, see that same score but negative. Or sorry, positive. All right, so that gives us two equations. So then we get negative uh, 1.64 equals my value, 10, minus the mean, divide the standard deviation. Mm -hmm. And the other one is 0 0.674. 
4 equals my value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so then uh, what I like to do is I like to just graph both these puppies and then see their intersections. So what I always, I usually leave uh, the standard deviation as the y value. So if I multiply by standard deviation on both sides and divide by this value, uh, then I can get standard deviation alone. So let's pretend that the y is the standard deviation. It should be 13 minus x divide uh, 0.674 and 10 minus x divide negative 1.64. Okay, so what are we expecting for a mean? Would you say, Mr. Curtis, when we're setting our window? Well, we're looking at between 10 and 13. So it's probably going to be between, what do you think? Definitely between 10 and 13, right? Yeah. Okay. So then, and the y values, standard deviations, is the y value? So that, I would say you'd be fair enough to go from 0 to 3 on that. Okay. So hopefully we get intersect somewhere right in the middle. Go, 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 go. Oops, what did I do? It's pretty close. Pretty good. Okay, second calc intersect. And enter, enter, enter. What's the y value? The y value is related to the mean. I'm sorry, the y value is a standard deviation. So our mean is 12.1. Standard deviation is 1.30. Not bad, pretty easy. Excellent. Just remember that uh, the most mis most times students make mistakes is uh, they'll put in this 0.25 right in their calculator and they'll do the problem as if it's a negative z-score when actually the 13 is a positive z-score. So just remember to do this, do the 1 minus 0.25. Excellent. Yeah. And drawing a sketch is always a good idea in order to pick up your marks and keep your thoughts organized. If you get a negative value, then you just Recognize, oh, that doesn't make sense as my z, as my z value. All right, um, other ways that, that you may have seen me do it are rearranging both of these equations and then using polysmalt to solve them or other means of solving simultaneous equations that you know of. All right, so set it up, draw your sketch, put in the things you know, solve for your z scores using inverse norm, and if you forget the syntax of using inverse norm, don't forget that you also have catalog help, and you can press plus beside it. Yeah. Excellent. Cool.